Jesus. Thank you for joining in this afternoon on Health Essentials on this beautiful day of February 21st, 2003. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. So as you know, we've been focusing on um, America's war against heart disease for the month of February, focusing on the heart, right? But we know that God said in his word, although America is warring against heart disease, we know that God said, according to Ephesians um, 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, wherefore we are to take on the full armor of God that we may be able to withstand in the evil day. And how many of you know we are in the some evil days so we need to be able to stand and having done all to stand. Because once we've stand and done all we know to do, we know that God will step in and do the rest. Amen. Amen. So today is the conclusion and a recap first. I'm going to recap what we've covered uh, this month and then we're going to conclude on that. Even though I have so much more to share, you know, but I do, uh, the Lord's Holy Spirit does help me to um, compact it to a level of understanding that you can take it forward and you know, it'll resonate with you and you can apply it to your life's journey where your health and wellness is concerned. All right. So let us go forward in prayer. Okay. Father God, I just thank you. Hallelujah for another opportunity, Lord God, on this day that you have made to share with your people concerning what thus saith the word according to their health and wellness. We thank you, Lord God, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord God, as you continue to mold and meld us all into the perfection that you would have us to be, Lord God, that we will all be fit for the master's use. I thank you and give you all the praise, honor, and glory on this day as you continue to move me out of the way and allow, allow what you have given me to share with your people to resonate with them and that they hear you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, amen. All right. You know, we know that also... Um, I wanted to reiterate that God said in his word, according to, well, let me get there, have it right here. According to Psalms 91, 16, and then in Deuteronomy 34 and 7, you know, he, God said that he would satisfy us with long life, right? So we declare, I declare, decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus that we, I, you will live long and strong on the earth. Like Moses, you know, our eyesight won't grow dim, you know, like the Israelites, we won't be feeble, praise the Lord. We will increase in strength and memory and not decrease, all right? We do not receive the world's views about aging, hallelujah, and what the world says where our health and wellness is concerned. Not exclusively, let me put that caption on there but we are getting stronger and healthier every day. As long as we learn to do the do's and don't do the don'ts, then you'll be all right, okay? So um, let me start with um, a bit of a recap where nutrition and heart health is concerned, a bit of a background um, information. So again, we've covered this um, to some degree in our past um, health essential sessions this month. But again, I'm doing a recap and then a conclusion, all right? So stay with me here. Now, heart disease, as we know, is a term most often used to describe the process of arterial sclerosis or hardening of the arteries, right? We know this. However, it also encompasses many other heart-related conditions such as, such as congestive heart failure, arrhythmias, mitral valve prolapse, ooh, cardiomyopathy, hypercholesterolemia, hypertriglyceridemia, stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes, and neuropathy. Now, people who have had heart-related procedures or surgery are also labeled as having heart disease. And as we know, heart disease, check this, is directly related to diet and lifestyle factors, which what? We have control over that. You can control that. So genetics also may play a role, but we know those are generational curses and we can bind those things, right? So um, those persons who have a family history of heart disease should at least be well-informed of lifestyle factors that can reduce their risk. Now, 
The goals of prevention, as we know, and treatment of heart disease involve minimizing the, the risk factors that I'm going to share with you in just a moment here through lifestyle, diet, and supplementation, and also if indicated by your doctor, medication, okay? So stretch, uh, excuse me, stress management is vital. I'm excited. I'm trying to get the information out. I'm excited to share it with you. So stress management is vital. We know don't smoke, right? We know that cardiovascular aerobic exercise of at least 30 minutes, three times per week is recommended for maintaining heart health. Dietary changes, we're going to cover that. A nutrient supplement support, and we're going to cover that as well. Major risk factors, all right. Increasing age, male sex, gender, postmenopausal women, heredity, and race. African Americans, American Indians, and Mexican Americans are more likely to have heart disease than Caucasians. This is due to research, all right? But it doesn't have to be so. You don't have to accept that. Just because research shows it, you don't have to accept it, all right? Whose report are we going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. Now, modifiable risk factors, smoking. We can modify this or eliminate it, period. Smoking, high blood pressure, elevated total blood cholesterol, elevated LDL cholesterol, elevated triglycerides, elevated C-reactive protein, which is an indicator of inflammation, physical activity, obesity, and overweight, and uncontrolled diabetes. Now, other factors to consider. Stress, we've talked about this, estrogen replacement therapy, oral birth control pills, excessive alcohol consumption, a lack of exercise and poor food choices. Of course, we know fast food, sugar, junk food, et cetera. All right, can exacerbate your heart health. Compromise it, cause problems. It doesn't have to be so because you are in control. So much of your health is up to you. The doctors are there. We've talked about this in case of an emergency. All right. <clears throat> now, coronary heart disease, just briefly, I'm just going to cover this, is the most common cause of death for, for both men and women in over here in the West. All right. And is increasingly prevalent in developing countries. Now, also called coronary artery disease, this arterial sclerotic process includes injury to the arterial wall, fatty streaks developed due to microphage ingestion of LDL cholesterol at the damaged site and platelet aggregation. We're talking stickiness of the platelets. So these events contribute to formation of plaque within the um, walls of the large arteries, okay? Progressive narrowing of the arteries leads to ischemia, uh, which is a lack of blood flow and oxygen to the heart and angina, which is heart pain. Typically brought on, it can be brought on by uh, heart excuse me, by physical exertion or can occur even when you're at rest. So symptoms of heart disease may not show up, check this, until about the third decade of life. Now, this doesn't have to be so. And again, it, it depends on lifestyle factors, how you're living your life, you know. Nevertheless, the process subtly can begin in childhood as fatty streaks that begin to build up on the walls of the arteries. And typically the first symptom of cardiovascular disease is often a condition, as I mentioned, known as angina pectoris or pain, which results from the lack of blood flow and oxygen to the heart, ischemia is what they call it. And it's most often due to the narrowing of one or more of the coronary arteries leading to the heart, narrowing, all right? And angina, it has been described as pressure in the chest. Uh, it can radiate to the neck, arms, back, and upper abdomen. Now, um, as we know that um, heart attack, which is my myocardial infarction, it occurs when the arterial serotic plaques rupture, causing constriction of blood vessel and formation of blood clots, which can partially or completely block the coronary artery that feeds blood and oxygen to the heart, okay? So um, just being aware of um, how your body functions, we've talked about that, the various systems of the body, especially the heart health is what we're talking about. If you're having any type of pain, you know, pay attention to that. Don't just shove it off as something else. Pay attention to that. And if it keeps happening, 
you know, then that's when you go and see your doctor. Now let's talk just a little bit about uh, blood tests when it comes to uh, heart health. Now there are no blood tests that are available that can definitely diagnose arterial sclerosis. However, epidemiological studies have identified certain blood markers such as cholesterol, triglycerides, fibrogenin, C-reactive program. We're gonna talk just a little bit about all of these um, and homocysteine to be associated with increased plaque formation and heart disease. It's number one, cholesterol. Studies show that elevated total and low density lipoprotein LDL cholesterol concentrations and low density lipoprotein HDL cholesterol concentrations in women and men increase the risk for arterial sclerosis and CHD. Now, um, the National Cholesterol Education Program defines elevated blood cholesterol as greater than 200 milligrams and elevated LDL cholesterol concentration is above 100. But you can, these numbers I'm talking about, you'll see your doctor and he'll explain it to you. Because I know it can be confusing when it comes to our cholesterol levels of, you know, what LDL and, L and HDL mean, all right? So treatment recommendations are based on epidemiological studies and clinical trials have shown that cardiac heart failure event risk significantly decreases when total cholesterol levels are kept low. So see your doctor on that if you have any concerns, all right? And uh, conventional medicine focuses heavily when it comes to cholesterol health on the connection between um, cholesterol levels and low, uh, low density lipoprotein, LDL, and heart disease risk, okay? So the focus has led to targeted pharmaceutical approaches in which to lower the serum cholesterol levels primarily with, um, of course, medication, all right? So again, see your doctor about it. So cholesterol. Structure, the function of cholesterol. Now, our body does make cholesterol. Now, cholesterol, just the definition, is a waxy substance produced by our liver. All right, our liver produces cholesterol and is found in foods of animal origin, such as meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and milk. Most importantly, it is not the, the problem. It is often made out to be, cholesterol is. It's not really the problem, all right? On the contrary, it has many important biological functions that are vital to our health and is a critical structural component of our cells, okay? Additionally, cholesterol is a precursor substance used by the body in the production of steroid hormones like estrogen, testosterone, adrenal hormones, cortisol, aldosterone, bile salts that aid in digestion of fats and vitamin D. We're going to talk if we can. If I don't get to vitamin D today, we will talk about that because vitamin D is very, very important to our health and wellness. So cholesterol is not always bad. It's good, it's good to have a certain amount of cholesterol because the body produces it anyway. But when we get into troubles, when we eat foods that um, add to it, add more cholesterol to our bodies, which again affects our cardiovascular health. Okay. So triglycerides. Now triglycerides are the chemical form in which most fats exist in food as well as in the body. All right. Triglycerides. Glycerides, triglycerides found in the blood are derived from the fats eaten in foods or is made in the body from other sources like carbohydrates. Excess calories ingested in a meal and not used immediately by tissues are converted to triglycerides and transported to fat cells to be stored. All right. So balancing the daily intake is very important to balance your daily intake of protein, carbohydrates, and fat to support energy needs without overeating. Um, and that's very, very important. So, you know, I love staying on the cutting edge of health and wellness. So I went to um, Vitamin Cottage. They offer free um, nutrition consultations there. And I knew, you know, I'm uh, at the point in this time, dispensation of time in my life that I am in tune with the functions of my body. And I knew that I was not getting enough protein because of the fact that I don't, um, I'm not a regular meat eater. 
All right. So, you know, I need to hear what someone else had to say about it, you know? So I went and, and had a consultation with her and I tell you, I would recommend, uh, so Vitamin Cottage offers, offers free, free consultations where your health and wellness is concerned. And I do too, as well. You know, she said, and she actually talked with me for two hours. And um, if you ever want to sit and talk with me, I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a 30 minutes to an hour of my time to really access what is going on with your body, all right, as far as your health and wellness is concerned. And if you're getting enough protein, fats, and carbohydrates, which is very, very vital to our health and uh, maintaining optimal health, we're leading towards optimal health. All right. So I said that to say this, I sat and talked with her and find out, you know, she just gave me different ways of how to incorporate protein into my diet. You know, not the same thing, not the same uh, source of protein, but different other options that didn't include me. So I was just very, very um, enlightened, you know, let me put it that way. So reach out to me and I'll be happy to enlighten you where your health wellness is concerned anytime. So let's move on. So balancing the daily intake of protein, carbohydrates, and fat is very important to support energy needs without overeating, again, which is very important. Hormones such as insulin, glucogen, and growth hormone regulate the release of triglycerides triglycerides from fat tissue so they meet the body's needs for energy between meals so i found out i'm not getting you know we need some source of fat you know and i'm not getting enough um even though my diet is clean i'm not getting enough saturated fat which is needed all right so dietary principles for healthy triglyceride levels include avoiding sugar white flour fried foods soda pop and junk food Okay, so let's move on. We're going to talk a little bit about fibrinogen. Elevated fibrinogen levels are considered a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Now you're probably wondering, what is fibrogen? It's a protein that's involved in the blood clotting cascade and has several other roles in the promotion of heart disease, all right? Like platelet aggregation, viscosity of the blood and stimulating the formation of arterial plaque. So it's uh, very important to have that particular protein and we'll talk a little more about that. Now, homocysteine briefly is a condition in which there are elevated levels of homocysteine found in the blood due to, a decreased, to the decreased ability of the body to process methionine, an amino acid, down in protein foods, all right? So as a result, homocysteine, a toxic byproduct of metabolism builds up in the blood causing problems, all right? So we don't want that. So high homocysteine levels are found in individuals with B vitamins, B6, especially B12, and you don't get that if you're not eating meat, all right? and folic acid deficiencies are found most commonly. These deficiencies are found most commonly in vegans, vegetarians, diabetics, alcoholics, and individuals with excessive use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, okay? So elevated, bottom line, elevated homocysteine has been associated as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, stroke, depression, and Alzheimer's disease. Did you know that, um, our health, our nutritional health can be directly related to our mental health. If you're feeling like you're, you know, down and out and kind of depressed or what have you, just don't feel like you want to, you don't enjoy the things in life that you used to enjoy, or you're feeling like, um, you know, gloom and doom. Do you know that could be a lack of a particular vitamin or mineral, simple as that, you know, you're not getting enough protein, you're not getting enough fat, you're not getting enough carbohydrates, or you're not getting that proper balance. So that's where, again, consultation comes in. All right. So just think about that. Now, men normally have a slightly higher homocysteine concentration than women do, and levels tend to increase with age. All right. So just keeping that in mind, let's talk a little bit about C reactive protein. Now, CRP is a nonspecific marker of systematic inflammation. So basically inflammation. So we know inflammation is detrimental to our health and wellness. All right. And inflammation is the process by which the body responds to injury or uninfection. So um, check this. When I went with to my um, consultation, I found out so if any of you know, but you know, my favorite food is nuts, right? So I can literally eat nuts 
as a meal, you know? So I found out and I was wondering why I was feeling, I knew I was inflamed, you know, within my body. So it's because I'm eating too many nuts. So too many, too much of a good thing can still be detrimental to our health. You know, it's not, more is not always better just because it's healthy. Um, calories and fat doesn't discriminate. You know, if you're eating too much of something, it can cause problems within your body. So I had to back up on the nuts a little bit because it was causing inflammation within my body. Wow. And that was just very enlightening to me. But yet we need, so we need information. So without information, our body cannot properly heal. For instance, say if we do cut your feet, your finger, right? And the process begins with, um, you know, you're red, it's red, it's hot, it's swelling, a sign that our immune system is responding appropriately to the injury. So we do need that. However, inflammation is only good up to a point, And then it becomes, you know, it can become toxic. So the problem arises when inflammation becomes chronic and unrelenting over weeks and months and prolonged and can become extremely damaging to tissues and cells. And we're talking about the heart health, right? Yes, walnuts, Lisa, Sister Lisa, Evangelist Lisa. Yes, walnuts are excellent for brain health. Oh my gosh, so excellent. And as you know, a walnut is shaped like the brain. If you look at it, it's shaped exactly like the brain. So it's very good for uh, our heart health, yes, and our brain health as well, all right. So um, laboratory evidence and clinical studies suggest that inflammation is a critical player in the onset and the progression of arteriosclerosis, heart problems, okay? So it's important to control inflammation. Now that's a whole nother topic. We've talked about it in past health essential sessions and I can bring that up on our next session, how to, Decrease inflammation in your body, what foods to eat to decrease inflammation. So there's so much more to share in that vein. All right. And I'm so happy to, to share it. So um, moving on, we were talking about the C-reactive protein and relating it to heart health. So a new way to assess our heart disease risk um, is, again, um, our cholesterol levels, our LDL is particularly composed of, um, it's called APOB, A-P-O-B. It functions to solubilize cholesterol within the LDL complex, which in turn increases the transport capacity of LDL. Now, I do want to share something else. Now, even though I have to watch my nut intake and my cholesterol level, I went to my doctor and he always tells me that my cholesterol is pristine because the fact that I do eat nuts (laughs) <laughs> and a pristine level of cholesterol means that it's perfect, you know, it's balanced. And it's important, to, again, to get those level, the, the LDL and the HDL to a healthy level that will lead towards optimal health. But again, that involves working with your doctor and he'll explain it to you in detail. All right, what you need to do or what you need to stop doing. Okay, so um, that's another way to um, access um, heart disease risk with our cholesterol levels. Okay. So moving on, let's talk about, um, rounded high density, yes, okay. So let's talk a little bit about, and some people do well with one meal a day or even two, but it's very important to eliminate snacks, all right? Because every time you eat, your body is producing insulin. So if your body's continually producing insulin every time you eat, then it can it causes the body to become insulin resistance and there's too much insulin floating about around in your body, which can lead to diabetes, okay? And then you need to wear, uh, well, I don't know that what they have these days, but I know back when they had a pump that, or something that you could wear in your body to um, regulate the uh, release of insulin in your body so that you don't become insulin resistance. So it's important to get enough protein, fats, and carbohydrates within each meal and become satiated within that meal so you won't be able to feel like snacking for until your next meal. So your first meal should carry you over to your next meal without snacking. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. So so researchers studying insulin resistance focus on its role in diabetes. Let me just talk a little bit about that. Um, The fact that an insulin resistant subject may not become diabetic does not mean that they suffer um, no in toward uh, consequences, all right? So 
said that to say that that say it that to say this that um, insulin resistance or too much insulin can lead to problems within the heart heart disease. So it's important to be able to control the insulin that's being um, released from the pancreas in the body. And we can all do that again by working in conjunction with our doctor. And so much of it, as I mentioned, is up to us to making sure that you're getting enough um, protein, fats, and carb, a good balance of protein, fats, and carb carbohydrates within your diet and eliminating, you know, the, the various the foods that we mentioned before, such as fast foods and high starchy foods and so forth, high fat foods. All right. So uh, moving on, I'm going to talk a little bit about personalized nutrition, just general recommendations. Okay. Now a diet style that focuses on whole unrefined foods is, is very, very important. That means limiting processed foods, which are often found in what? Bags, boxes, and cans. Base the diet around a rainbow of colorful vegetables, as we know, beans, legumes, whole unrefined grains, fruits, nuts, and seeds, um, wild cold water fish, grass-fed meats. I was told I need to start eating more, um, well, I need to consider consider, all right? Because what I'm sharing with you are considerations and recommendations to consider eating red meat, you know, to get that good source of vitamin B12. But then again, you know how we talk about how meat to, in these days, we don't know how it's been processed. And even if it really is the meat that it says on the package, you know, so you have to really be careful with that. It could be anything in that package, all right? So um, and my recommendation would be going to, would be to go to um, Vitamin Cottage because their meat um, sources are guaranteed they come from reliable sources, organic sources, and so forth. So anyway, I was told that. So we know that um, to rec I'm recommending, you know, game meats, free range and chemical free poultry and organic eggs. Refined carbohydrates, as we know, such as white flour, sugar and products made with them should be strictly eliminated or even avoided entirely. Fried foods, you know, these are just no brainers. Fried, fried foods, soda pop, commercial fruit juices, this should be avoided entirely. Complex carbohydrates can include vegetables, starchy vegetables, beans, legumes, and whole grains, okay? Vegetables tend to be high in fiber, uh, vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. We, could, we, should, we should focus on a wide variety of green leafy vegetables, as I always talk about cabbage, purple and green cabbage, kale, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, those are the ones you really want to include in your salads, um, dark green leafy vegetables, such as chard, as I mentioned, kale, spinach, broccoli, romaine lettuce, green and red leaf lettuces and field greens, okay? Having that small green salad a day, I'm telling you, you will benefit exponentially from that daily. And you can make it taste good, you know, to your taste. And my my salad that I prepare is, the, my base is actually, um, cabbage, red and purple cabbage. All right. So that's my base. It's dry. And then I add to that. And then I add um, green peppers, red, yellow, orange peppers. I add um, avocados. I may add some steamed eggs. I may add some, um, if I want warmth, I may add some steamed vegetables and put that on top of my salad and then drizzle that with olive oil and add some um, nutritional yeast. And I tell you, you talking about good. I always say, slap your mama good salad. It is so good. I just, it's just mm, 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 so delicious to me. So um, get used to eating your vegetables more. If you're not eating them daily, start. I tell you, your, your, your health will benefit. Um, and starchy vegetables are, you know, in moderation, as we know, corn, sweet potatoes, yams, winter squashes, pumpkin, butternut squash, and acorn squash. Um, they're often shunned because of their carbohydrate content. Um, starchy vegetables, they've received, you know, just a bad press and the complex carbohydrates or sugars found in starchy vegetables can be absorbed slower in the bloodstream. They have a low uh, glycemic index level, then refined carbohydrates and processed so sugar, sugar, excuse me, which are quickly absorbed. So I would recommend sweet potatoes or yams, you know, versus like corn or white potatoes and squashes and so forth like that. 
So um, the presence of fiber slows down the absorption of sugars into the bloodstream and prevents the exaggerated blood sugar spike, as we know that is associated with simple refined carbohydrates. We don't want that. So uh, beans and legumes, four or more servings. Um, that's a lot per day, but you can start slow, you know, all right. Um, we know to include um, herbs and spices such as turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, cumin, fennel, caraway, rosemary, lemongrass, garlic, and basil. They not only add flavor to, you can add those to beans and legumes, but they also help to fight off flatulence because no beans give us, what do they give you? They give you gas. And, you know, I remember back, my mom used to soak, you know, they say soak your beans before you cook them. That can help as well. All right. So whole grains rich in fiber, magnesium, folate, um, such as vitamin B6 and vitamin E, such as, you know, brown rice, oatmeal, quinoa, spelt, um, if gluten, if you're gluten intolerant, um, these types of whole grains can be helpful addition to your heart healthy diet lifestyle. However, it is of utmost importance to avoid refined grains and flours and products made from them, such as breads and crackers. So what am I always talking about? To eliminate pizza, pancakes, pasta, waffle, waffles, biscuits, <laughs> Cereal, crackers, chips, popcorn, processed foods, bread, cake, pies, donuts, and bagels. That should not be included into your daily or even weekly diet. If you do so, in moderation every once in a while, okay? Um, because they turn it to what? Sugar in the body. And then that means um, that the body needs to produce more insulin, right? And then you become, you, it could possibly cause you to become insulin resistant, which will lead to diabetes, all right? So we're talking just doing the do's and not doing the don'ts, saints. Again, do all that you know to do. So much of your health is important, um, is up to you rather. Um, fiber is a term uh, used for a variety of plant substances that are resistant to digestion in humans. Dietary fibers include cellulose, lignans, hemocellulose, pectins, gums, and mucilages. So there's also non-soluble fiber and soluble fibers such as oats, beans, barley, psyllium, and so forth. They have been, re, um, research has shown that they reduce serum cholesterol and so, slows down the absorption of sugar. So improving blood glucose regulation and so forth. So examples of soluble fiber, I'll give you right now, split peas, red kidney beans, raspberries, whole wheat spaghetti, broccoli, oatmeal, and green beans, all right? So those can be included, you know, into your diet. So I'm moving on to uh, protein. As we know, protein um, is, a is found in a variety of foods from plant to animal sources. Hard, healthy animal proteins, as I mentioned just before, a wild caught cold water fish, such as salmon, halibut, sardines. Sardines are excellent source. They're high in omega-3 fatty acid, organic poultry, grass-fed meats, such as beef, buffalo, lamb, and cage-free eggs high in DHA. Now plants not only contain carbohydrates, but also contain protein and they're rich in fiber, fiber as well. So individual needs, you know, protein needs, they vary uh, dramatically, you know, pertaining to your age, your height and your weight and your level of activity. So, so due to numerous factors such as stress levels as well, did you know that if you're stressed, if you're under stress, um, you need more protein. Your body could possibly need more protein. So then if you are not, now this is according to a study, all right, people with hypoglycemia, hyperthyroidism, adrenal insufficiency, yeast overgrowth, and food allergies usually need more protein. Protein requirements also change throughout life, as I just mentioned you know, about what, when I went to my consultation, how my protein requirements are changing. I'm, I'm noticing a lot is changing as I age. Um, like for instance, I don't need to eat as much. I feel like I don't, I'm not hungry all the time. I don't need to eat as much <laughs> because um, again, through life, it changes throughout our life. Now, because, um, let's see here, because many factors affect optimal protein intake, the best way to determine how much protein you should eat is to experiment with a different 
amounts of protein and see how you feel or to meet up with me or a cons uh, uh, someone um, who can consult you at Vitamin College and we can do an analysis uh, according to your age, your height and your weight to determine how much protein, fat and carbohydrate, carbohydrates you need, all right? I can do an analysis on that. So common uh, symptoms that can signal a need to eat more protein and fewer carbohydrates include fatigue, poor mental focus, frequent susceptibility to illness, yeast overgrowth, bloating, and an inability to lose weight. All right. It could be something, like I mentioned, something as simple adding more protein, right? So, um, you know, there's many healthy fats out there that I already just mentioned. As we know, exercise is very important. Um, you don't have to be a member of a gym to exercise. You know, there's you got the whole planet Earth. You can go walk around the block to exercise, all right, in order to have a healthy heart. Nevertheless, exercise is an essential, essential component of healthy lifestyle and should be a primary part of everyone's daily routine. And also experts agree, and I agree as well, as a personal trainer, that aerobic exercise should be done at least three to four times a week for about 30 minutes each day. If you have a busy set schedule, that's not an excuse, all right? You can break up those 30 minutes into three 10-minute sessions, all right? It, when you're brushing your teeth, you know, so, so simple. When you're brushing your teeth, do squats. When you're brushing your teeth, walk around the house. When you're in the, at the counter preparing food, do some squats, do some more squats, all right? <laughs> So you can choose from a wide range of activities, including you know, walking, cycling, dancing, swimming, do something that you enjoy. Because if you don't choose something that you don't enjoy, you won't do it. But if you choose something that you enjoy, you'll do it, all right? So um, we know that even moderate um, daily activities such as gardening and so forth can contribute to our exercise routine as well. So moving on, stress. Um, Psychological stress can trigger heart attack and lead to premature, premature death. So, you know, they always say that there's such a thing as healthy stress, stress but I beg to differ. I mean, it just depends. I, I, I think any type of stress in your life, just like calories don't discriminate. You know, if you're eating a, too many of the, the healthy calories, what's going to happen? You're going to gain weight. So if you're um, operating in a level of what you consider healthy stress, stress, it can still affect your heart health. All right. So it's essential to learn techniques to help you modulate the stress response. Again, activities such as prayer, number one, praise the Lord. Um, let's see, Pilates, you know, as well, um, have been proven to be effective in reducing the harmful effects of stress, especially prayer. We know this, all right. So um, nutrients such as vitamin E, magnesium, fish oil, vitamin C, arginine, um, niacin, panthenine, grapeseed extract, pycnogenol, coenzyme Q10, hawthorn, garlic, and natokinase. We're going to talk, I'm going to talk more about vitamins in our next session where our um, heart health and our overall um, health and wellness is concerned. We'll talk about vitamins. But I know I just covered a lot of information there and I pray that you were able to um, that receive it and I pray that it resonates with you. All right, so we're going to end this session. Let me check, I think I had some questions here. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Just about walnuts and someone mentioned about their daughter wearing that pump, that insulin pump, okay? I know they have technology has changed and um, there's so many, I'm, I'm sure there's some other type of cutting edge technology that can be used to um, help with insulin uh, production or controlling insulin production within the body. So anyway, so I'm gonna end this session right there and feel free to, if you have any questions, comments or, or concerns, you can speak up now or just wait until you see me and um, I can answer them that, at that time. So any questions, comments, or concerns?
I know a lot. To, it was a lot to process. And remember, this uh, session is recorded, so you can go back and listen in to something that you need a bit of a clarification on, or you can reach out to me when you see me in person. All right. Okay. All right. Well, let us close out this session. And that was the recap and conclusion to um, Love is in the Air for the month of February, but we will continue on in other things where our health and wellness is concerned. All right, let's end in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this time of sharing and caring, Lord God, where our heart health is concerned, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for the information that you have provided, hallelujah, for me to share with your people, Lord God. We know that um, we are you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within us, and that is by faith. And help us to know, Lord God, that we know you as a healer. We know you as a deliverer. We know you as a way maker. Help us to know that so much of our health yet is still in, up to us, Lord God, to continue to do the dues because you've already provided us with everything pertaining to life and godliness that we need, Lord God. We just need to reach up and grab it, hallelujah, and take care of these vessels because they are indeed made to last until Jesus returns. I believe that with all my heart, as long as you was given the necessary tools that it needs to do so. So I just thank you and praise you for everyone that is on the line, Lord God. And that as we leave this place, but never from your presence, you will always be with us, leading and guiding us and, we, and providing for us. And we just thank you, Lord God. We love you, Lord. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Here's to you and optimal health.